Here we go. It's time to explain micro and macroeconomics to you. Let's start off with explaining something called the circular flow. This is something you learned in class. You probably don't even remember it, but this explains everything you're going to learn in microeconomics, and it helps you a lot with what you're going to understand in macroeconomics. Here it is. There's only three entities in the economy. That's it. We're talking about a free market system, assuming you know what that is. Free market system, there's businesses, there's individuals, you and me, and then there's the government. That's it. Three entities. That's all. Once you get that, perfect. Now, there's two different things. There's the product market and the resource market. The product market is where we're going to start. Okay? What do businesses do? Businesses make stuff. Businesses make stuff, and they sell it in what's called the product market. And good stuff is called goods and services. Goods and services, they sell it in the product market. Right? The product market isn't a place. It's all places where goods and services are sold. Online auctions, eBay, uh, the mall, all that stuff is the product market. These goods and services make their way over here to individuals. Goods and services, me and you, we buy the stuff. That's it. Perfect. Now, if that makes sense to you, we can't just walk in the store and grab it and take off. We've got to give them something. Individuals need to give money. Yeah, we've got to give money. So this is spending. Spending by individuals, by you and me, in the product market, that money eventually comes in. Now, it's not called spending to the firm. Firms will go, oh, wait, we made spending. And don't say profit. Here's why. Profit is not all the money coming in. You know that. Don't say profit. This is revenue. Okay, revenue coming in to these firms from people buying their stuff. That's it. That's all. That's what the product market looks like. Now, to produce this goods and services, these firms can't just make it out of nowhere. They need something. What do they need? They need resources. And in the free market system, who owns the resources? Not the government. Individuals. Me and you own our land, our labor, our capital, entrepreneurship. So these things come in this direction are the resources to produce stuff. Also called the four factors of production. Four factors of production, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Those resources make their way through what's called the resource market, right? The market for resources. Those resources get all the way to the firms. Firms convert those resources into goods and services, going that direction. Now, I don't work for free. You don't work for free. So they got to give us money. Money coming out from a firm. It's not called revenue. It's not called, what is it? I don't know. It's spending, but it's spending by businesses. We're going to call this, right? This right here is, let's call this costs. These are the costs of production, right? The costs for all the different resources look like that. Coming in over here to individuals, you don't call it cost. Oh, I made cost today. You're going to call this income, right? Income is right there, money coming in. Now, everything in blue is money. Now, we're not done. We're not done. Let's analyze it before we go any further, though. Okay, take a look. Businesses, do they supply or demand? Go ahead and answer. Do businesses supply or demand? The answer, both. They're demanding and they're supplying. What do you mean? Well, it's right here. In the product market, what are they doing? Well, they're supplying goods and services. So right here, firms are supplying. And who's demanding? Well, that's easy. Individuals. We demand goods and services in the product market. We demand products. But that's not the only thing going on here. These firms, they're supplying these products, but they're also demanding resources. They demand resources. And me and you, individuals, we supply resources. So when I ask you, do businesses supply and demand? The answer is both. They uh, supply in the product market, they demand in the resource market. Okay, so far so good. Now there's something we're missing, it's right there. We're going to find out what the government does. First of all, the, the projector I had in my classroom, this board, that screen, all this different stuff was purchased by the government. So the government also buys goods and services. Right? So this is goods and services. Right? This thing wasn't made by the government, this was purchased by the government for, by some individual firm. Now to do it, they had to give the money. This money coming out is government spending. All right? And at the same time, the government hires workers, right? And it gets resources. Those resources, right? In this case, labor, are resources that go into the government. Resources. And they got to pay for that labor. So money coming out, again, is government spending. All right, so far so good. We've got spending, we've got spending, we've got a problem. What's the problem? We need money going in. Now the question is, where does the government get its revenue? Well, just by looking, it figures out. Notice we're back to blue. This is money. It comes in from here, and it comes in from here. Dollar sign, dollar sign. How does it come in? Well, from here, it comes from taxes. Right, we're talking about income taxes, sales taxes, taxing individuals, you and me. At the same time, the government taxes businesses in the form of ta corporate taxes. 
So tax money comes in, right, from individuals and from businesses towards the government, not get converted into spending, and they go ahead and buy stuff and resources. But we're not done. Sometimes, sometimes, money goes out. Money going out, in this case, is like subsidies to individual firms, right? In this case, it's called a transfer payment. Transfer payments. Transfer payments are like Social Security, times when the government gives people money. Hey, here's some money. There you go. Again, this is all blue. It's all money. And the government just doesn't do that. It just doesn't tax and subsidize businesses or give transfer payments. It also provides public goods, right? So coming out and is providing people things like national defense, highways, education. So this is goods and services provided by the government. Goods and services. That's it. That's called the circular flow model. This tells you how these three different entities are all related to each other in the free market system. And it's beautiful. Why is it beautiful? Here's why. If you understand what you're looking at, you understand what microeconomics is all about, right? The class microeconomics. Now, the way I'm going to present it to you, I'm going to present you with six different units. Six units. Unit one is going to be off to the side. It's the basic concept, scarcity, production possibilities curve, things that are outside the circular flow. It's just kind of the general stuff to kind of get it okay, good. Every other unit, two, three, four, five, and six are all inside the circular flow, right? So let's go ahead and figure out what they are. Unit two is going to be supply and demand, but there's two of them. There's that supply and demand and there's that one. It's down here. This is going to be unit two, supply and demand for goods and services. Unit three and unit four are basically going to be right here. Okay? We're going to look at individual firms and how they maximize profit, the theory of the firm. We're going to look at like, their costs, we're going to look at their revenue, we're going to look at these individual firms, we'll find out there's four different market structures. There's perfect competition, monopolist competition, oligopolies, and monopolies. So four different markets we're going to look at that are basically sound products in the product market. Okay, unit five is here. This is when you analyze firms hiring workers or firms uh, getting resources. Right? So that's looking at demand and supply, except now it's switched. Right now, firms are the ones demanding, and me and you individuals are supplying. And the last one, where is it? Right there. Unit six is the role of the government. It's going to talk about public goods. It's going to talk about externalities. It's going to talk about taxes. It's going to talk about when the government comes in to do different things. That's unit six, the role of the government and market failures. That's it. Six different units. Microeconomics is all there. Now, pay attention. This is the best part. If you've already learned microeconomics, and you should have if you're watching this video, you've got this key concept that comes back all the time, over and over and over and over again. Here it is. Right here, when we talk about individuals, individuals maximize their own self-benefit by looking at the marginal benefit versus the marginal cost of doing something. Right? If you're going to decide to eat cookies, you look at the additional benefit, and the law of diminishing margin utility applies, and you compare the additional cost, and you go, eh, I'm going to stop eating cookies. We've learned that concept before. If you haven't learned it, you will. Down here, right, over here, in unit three, we find out about this rule called MR equals MC. Firms should produce as long as the additional revenue of the output is greater than the additional cost of producing that output. Then it'll maximize profit. Okay, that looks similar. We find out later that supply equals demand. In unit two, we talk about supply and demand. The whole time, what you didn't know is marginal cost is a supply curve. Right? The, margin, the supply curve is just marginal cost. Demand curves are just a marginal benefit curve. It's that all over again, right? Marginal cost, marginal benefit, same stuff. Marginal revenue, marginal cost, right? Over here in units five, hiring workers, you'll find out you hire workers if the marginal revenue product is equal to the marginal resource cost. That means the money coming in when I hire a worker, if it's greater than the additional cost of hiring that worker, I should hire them. You keep hiring, 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 until that equals each other. Not done. Now over here in the government, the government does things with a marginal social benefit equals the marginal social cost. Government comes in. It looks at the additional benefit of providing a dam to a local town, right? It looks at the additional cost and it says, okay, should we do it? Or it determines how many parks we should produce in a city, right? What's the additional benefit, society's benefit of another park? This concept of marginal analysis is everywhere in the circular flow and it explains unit one, unit two, three, four, five, and six. Hopefully that makes sense to you. That's the circular flow. That's what we're doing for the remainder of our time together. So here we go. Let's rock. Now, I'm quite aware that some of you, 
Some of you are taking macroeconomics and you're like, I don't care. I don't care about unit five of the resource market. You're not going to learn anything about that. I don't really care about the cost to individual firms. You're not going to do any of that in macro either. And you're not really going to look at the role of the government in a micro setting. You'll look at the role of the government with fiscal and monetary policy. So the reality is you're like, I don't give a crap about any of this. But you do, and here's why. Okay? Don't worry about the individual small stuff. Let's worry about the big stuff. Individuals. Individuals, right, when we think of individuals and we think of them in the product market, they are consumers. So I'm going to write C. Okay? Consumers, they buy stuff. That's consumer spending right there. Okay, that's easy. About 70% of the economy. There's also businesses. Now, businesses, they also buy stuff. They buy resources and they buy products and other things like that. These, right, sometimes they go out and buy capital. This is called investment. Spending by businesses is called investment. Say it again. Spending by businesses is called investment. Never, ever, ever think that investment is like personal investment. Stocks and bonds, your parents' retirement. That's not what investment is for our purposes. It's when businesses spend on their own business, make a bigger factory, buy more machinery, increase their capital stock. There it is, investment. That's not it. There's three entities here. The other one's right here, the government. The government does all sorts of spending too, right? They spend, they spend, right? We've got C. I, G, and also one more thing that's not here, we've got to calculate XN, which is net exports. So there's only four entities when you think of outside of economy. There's consumers, there's businesses, there's the government, and there's other countries. And that's what macro is all about. Macro is really simple. All it is is you analyze what GDP is. It's the combination of C plus I plus G plus XN, add it all up. Once you add it all up, we figure out how the economy is doing. We talk about unemployment. We'll talk about inflation. And then the rest of the semester, the rest of the units, are all talking about one simple concept, fixing it. We talk about fiscal policy. We talk about how the government taxes and how the government spends to solve. When this C is low, the government comes in and says, uh-oh, consumption is too low. Let's go ahead and increase government spending or decrease taxes. Right? Those situations would result in the economy expanding. That's what the government is trying to do to solve that problem with fiscal policy. There's another one called monetary policy, which is controlling the money supply to affect the interest rate. And that's really focusing on investment for the most part. And also consumption. But for the most part, it's trying to look at businesses, businesses taking out loans to produce more stuff. That's it. Now, fiscal, monetary policy. We'll talk a little about foreign exchange with other countries and relative currencies. We'll talk about comparative and absolute advantage. All that stuff's coming. It's going to be a macroeconomics. Hopefully this stuff makes sense to you. All right, it's time to rock. Let's get to work.